Hello students, it's Dr. Ways, and welcome to your lecture on the ear. So the ear is made up of three parts. We have the external ear, which is the part that we can visibly see. The middle ear, which is just outside the skull. And the internal ear, or inner ear, which is actually inside the uh, bones of the skull and contains the structures required for processing sound and equilibrium. Now the same model that you see right here is we have in the laboratory, so, uh, or the anatomy lab, so make sure that you uh, take a look at that when you get to the lab and get familiar with the different parts. So beginning with the external ear, which is that part that's visible, uh, this picture on the left shows you all of the different parts that you should be familiar with. And it is going to be important to uh, know these parts because you're not just going to use it for this particular class, but you're going to be uh, looking at these different parts and assessing them when you do your physical exam lab as well. So make sure you're familiar with all of these uh, terms and parts that are outlined in gray here. Uh, moving from the part that you see from the outside and going into the actual uh, ear itself or the external acoustic meatus, um, what we see at the end and what demarcates the border between the external ear and the middle ear is the tympanic membrane. Right, and that is also known as the eardrum. So this is another thing, again, that you will be uh, assessing when you do your physical exam is the tympanic membrane and what it looks like. So the appearance should be uh, in basically a neutral position, not uh, bulging or anything like that. Uh, the color should be about pearly gray. Uh, you should be able to see through it and uh, when doing certain maneuvers, you should be able to uh, see it respond to pressure changes. All right, in different sources, you're gonna see uh, this section right here, the external acoustic meatus, also called auditory meatus or auditory canal or acoustic canal. Uh, so uh, be aware that there may be several terms for the same structures. The middle ear is on the other side of the tympanic membrane, with, uh, which is in the petrous portion of the temporal bone, so just underneath the petrous portion of the temporal bone uh, before you get to the internal ear, which is completely encased in bone. Okay? Uh, attached to the tympanic membrane, you have the first of the three ossicles that are responsible for uh, transmitting vibrations from the tympanic membrane to the organs for hearing. And those are called the malleus, uh, and that would be this bone right here, the malleus. Incus, which is a second bone uh, right here. And the stapes, which is a third bone right here. And the stapes, you can always tell, looks like, it ha looks like a, a wishbone with an oval attached to it and that's going to be attached to the oval window uh, leading into the uh, internal ear. So what happens is the tympanic membrane vibrates, that vibrates the malleus, the hammer, which then vibrates the incus, uh, which then vibrates the stapes and the stapes is going to have this back and forth motion which is then going to uh, create ripples within the fluid uh, within the structures within the inner ear and we'll talk about how that um, those vibrations are transmitted uh, a little bit here but definitely in physiology note that the middle ear also has a uh, mucous membrane that lines it that is continuous with the pharyngotympanic uh, tube uh, that leads into the nasopharynx so its job then is to uh, basically provide an uh, air or an equalization chamber for pressure between the middle ear and the uh, nasopharynx 
And it also is a passageway to clear mucus from the middle ear because if this is mucous membrane, it's gonna be producing mucus to keep everything in there moist, but you're gonna to have to have a way to drain it and that's drained through the uh, eustachian tube. All right, one more thing to point out is the tympanic membrane here. This is what a normal tympan tympanic membrane looks like. Uh, so notice that it's kind of a pearly gray, gray appearance. You can see through it. Um, and in a real one, you should be able to tell whether it's bulging or not, although you can't really see that clearly in this picture. All right, the inner ear is completely com uh, encased in bone. And again, that's going to be uh, encased within that petrous portion of the temporal bone. And there are two parts to the inner ear. There are these semicircular canals right here, and those are going to be responsible for uh, detecting uh, linear acceleration in three dimensions um, with these different semicircular canals that are oriented in different directions, X, Y, and Z planes. And then we also have this cochlea right here, which is the organ of hearing. You ever heard of cochlear implants? They are designed to replace the job of what the cochlea does. So what happens here is when the uh, stapes vibrates, it's going to transmit that vibra those vibrations into the inner ear and send those vibrations along the cochlea and vibrate the organs that are within the small organs that are within the cochlea, which are then going to transmit signals through the cochlear nerve, which is part of cranial nerve uh, 8, the vestibular cochlear nerve, to the brain to be interpreted. And of course, where does uh, sound get interpreted in the brain? That's right, the temporal lobe. Any information from linear acceleration or static equilibrium uh, comes from these semicircular semi canals. And the information from that's gonna be transmitted along the uh, vestibular nerve and be interpreted within the brain. Uh, in conjunction with uh, several parts of the brain, including the cerebellum. And here's a blow up of the semicircular canals with two other structures called the saccule and the utricle. And the semicircular canals, or what they call ducts here, are responsible for that linear acceleration. So when you turn your head um, or shake your head, nod it up and down, these the fluid in there moves and sends signals about uh, which direction your head is located in space but this sacra saccule and utricle they're responsible for determining your static balance and where you are in space without movement uh, so to help you maintain that normal equilibrium or balance and then finally uh, right here you see the facial nerve coming here uh, into the internal acoustic meatus because remember the facial nerve also goes into the internal acoustic meatus but that's then it's going to pass by all of these organs and come out uh, underneath the external acoustic meatus uh, right about here.